you ever just have one of those days where things were going on that just made you go, hmm? Well, today I'm, I'm having a day like that, and if you are too, uh, grab yourself a cup of coffee and uh, let's just kind of hmm together. What do you say? Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! So Hunter Biden finally concedes that the laptop is his. Yeah, we kind of knew that, Sherlock. After all, you were the one that turned it into the computer repair place and signed off on it. Despite the fact that right before the 2020 election, members of the Intel community came out and said it was Russian disinformation. It was obviously cooked up by the Russians and then planted to look like Hunter's laptop. And we had, what was it? 20, 30, 40 so-called former and current employees of the alphabet communities that work in intelligence telling us that there was no there there. This was all disinformation. The media went right along with it, didn't ask any real questions. The FBI apparently wasn't really all that concerned with looking at it, finding out what was actually on the hard drives, etc., 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 and now we're finding out what we all knew. It is real. And now Hunter Biden, the new strategy is to sue the whistleblower who outed him. R really. And of course, you know, the Democrats will go along with this. After all, they're outraged that the House Republicans booted Ilan Omar from the oversight of foreign affairs. Well, Duh, <laughs> she has a history of hating Jews, in particular Israel. You really want somebody that literally loathes, hates, and despises a specific group of people being on an oversight committee that deals with our relationship with those very people. I mean, come on. And of course, we know how the media will spin this, that the Republicans are the racists. No, Ilan is the racist the chick who married her brother so she could get citizenship here so she could run. But after all, you're not supposed to point those things out. She's a woman of color, which I thought a few years ago we were told don't use that phrase, colored people, but people of color. Okay, she's a person of color from Africa and female. So you, you can't say anything. Well, Ilan got the boot, and, you know, bye, 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 bye. And we're sure that her pal, AOC, will have a few things to say about it. You mean, Pelican, you're not being consistent. You know, I've really decided that she's not all that interested, referring to AOC, she's really not all that interested in being an actual congressperson. She's just a media influencer. She just uses Congress as her way, her backdrop, to do what she loves to do, which is video chat with everybody and opine about her asinine, off-the-wall views and opinions. That's AOC. Move her over to irrelevance. But Hunter Biden. Were any of Joe's documents on there? You think maybe we ought to look? at that computer for classified information? When are we going to look in Hunter's house? And isn't it interesting in my how convenient that the FBI doing a further search of Joe Biden's house found nothing after they were asked to leave because it was the weekend. And they're having guests in and can't have the FBI nosing and probing around. I I'm sure Donald... C Trump would have had that same request honored had he had said about Mar-a-Lago when they were there. <laughs> hey, this just isn't a good time right now. Uh, just leave what you've got. We'll lock the door to this room. We promise you nobody will come in here after you leave, but we need the house for the rest of the weekend. We have company coming. And of course, magically now, uh, the FBI, well, we, we just didn't find anything. That whole thing is a dog and pony show. Here's the bottom line. And, and Dan Bongino is doing some great reporting on this. 
you've got George Soros money involved here. Soros funding into an organization run by an oligarch in Ukraine who in turn gave all kinds of money to, what's that company? Burisma, who paid Hunter, who paid Daddy. And now that we've got too many stones being unturned and a few reporters here and there actually starting to ask some real questions, the guy that actually funded the campaign to get Zelensky elected of Ukraine, his pal, the guy who was actually owned the TV channel he was on, that, that, that Ukrainian oligarch, who also funneled money to Hunter, to Daddy, is now under investigation himself and in jail under the orders of Zelensky. Like he got a phone call from the president of the United States saying, hey, if you want that funny money, billions of war help coming, and you want it to keep coming, this guy's got to go away. Bum, ba -dum -bum. So the plot thickens there. And it's just one of those things that just kind of makes you go, hmm. But the cojones on Hunter, you know, after what, two years of denial that it was his laptop, now they finally concede, yeah, it was mine, and, and how dare you tell people what was on it. His lawyers are out there threatening every news agency that outed anything that was on that, any commentator that has talked about it, but in particular, the whistleblower, I guess that would be the dude at the computer store, for coming forward with it. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that plays. The Washington Free Beacon, which claims to be a voice for patriotism, and I know a lot of conservatives absolutely love the Washington Free Beacon, uh, running an article that uh, Trump is having a 2024 presidential rebound. And the only reason he's having it is because, uh, you know, Joe Biden screwed up with classified documents, and in actuality, it's worse than what Trump did. And so that makes what Trump did now null and void. And um, the bottom line is that DeSantis ought to be the guy, not Trump. That was the takeaway from the article by Matthew What's-His-Name over at the Washington Free Beacon. Well, Matt, let me help you out here. Without Donald Trump, you don't have Trump policy. And this whole canard, this whole bullhock fantasy that some of you guys are having, what you're going to end up doing is tanking the career of Ron DeSantis. And here's what I mean by that. Ron DeSantis has done a very good job in Florida. Not necessarily on his own. His team pulled him to the right. And I, I really, I, I don't want to have to start going after Ron DeSantis. I like Ron DeSantis and I like what he's done for Florida. But he's deep state. And if we have to get into it, I'll lay it all out that the deep state has set Ron DeSantis up to have these wins in Florida to sucker in the MAGA crowd. Bump, ba -dump, bump. What they want to do is infiltrate, hijack, and take over the movement. You know, kind of like they did on a particular day in January. I just finished reading Mike Pence's new book. I, it, he was sickened and angered by what he saw on that day when people came into the Capitol and trashed and destroyed. Really? I, I, I guess I missed that. The video footage all looks like a bunch of junior high kids on a, on a, on a field trip, walking in between the velvet ropes and pointing and looking and taking selfies, even with Capitol Police and security. Mike. I'm coming after you, too. You're, you're a traitor. Right now, you're an irrelevant traitor, but we get a little closer, and you actually get dumb enough to throw your hat in the ring. I'm coming after you, Mike, as far as outing you and your record and the fact that you ran the practice for the pandemic as governor of Indiana. Some people have forgotten that. I haven't. 
The reason Donald Trump made you point man when the pandemic hit and you immediately grabbed Anthony Fauci is the two of you did your test run of what to do in a pandemic in the state of Indiana. Bump, ba dum bump. And we'll get to that. We'll get to the fact that uh, you are nothing but a Trojan horse. Aside, Ron DeSantis, deep state. Deep state, and they're letting him win some of these culture battles. And this is the guy who knows when to take on the culture, and he knows how to hit back. And look what he's doing, etc., etc., etc. He's Trump without the Trump baggage. And look, he's got a beautiful wife, and he's got cute kids. Yeah, he looks like the total package. Yeah, let the, you, you start. You start to catch on what this is. Now listen, would he be 100% improvement over what we currently have? Oh yeah, on the social end of things. On what we see as the, the visible side of things. But it would be business as usual when it comes to the military-industrial complex really being the ones who make the decisions, run the country, and a foreign policy that you and I have absolutely no idea of what they're really up to. Why they're saber-rattling now with China for a 2025 war. Why we're fighting a proxy war with Russia because we don't want Russia and Germany to ever get together because you take Russian natural resources and Germany's economic power and ability to create technology and that's what America truly fears. So, Ron DeSantis will be down with all of that. But, you know, he'll, he'll have his war against critical race theory. He'll have his war against transgenderism in the schools. And that's all fine. And that's all stuff that, you know, MAGA people would love. But here's what the Washington Free Beacon and other conservative media outlets are missing. Ron DeSantis, to get elected, will have to hold the entire MAGA coalition together. And if Donald Trump decides to run, which he is running, if he decides he's, he's not going to give this up, he's not going, Ron DeSantis is not going to get the MAGA crowd, period. And he can't win without them because he is a created illusion to try to sucker and woo the MAGA crowd. And it's not going to happen. Mr. President, Part of your rebound, you're talking policy again, and that's good. That's good. I'm telling you, the big one you need to go for, health care, health care, health care, health care for everybody. I know, it sounds like a democratic thing. Uh, I don't know about some of you, but I find myself changing positions and policies over the past three, four, five years on things that I thought I was pretty set on. But I really began to realize they, 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 the powers that be, the oligarch, the ruling class, they are the creators of this illusion called left and right. Conservative Democrat, Republican, uh, liberal. They, they create all that. When in reality, all those powers that be are the same thing. They want endless war. And good Republicans who are patriotic, we signed up for every war. No more. No more. Remember, Donald Trump was supposed to be this fascist that was that was going to thwart our rights. Where are our rights being thwarted now? Who is it that's telling us we will or won't be vaccinated? Or you can't have a job, you can't come inside. Who's doing all that? Is, that? is that Donald Trump? Is that Trumplicans? Or is that the liberals? See, it, 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 that, that, whole, that whole dog and pony show, it's over. It's over. And so Donald Trump has to get big on some ideas that normally Republicans would back away from. But it was Donald Trump who got the Republican Party to say, we really don't need to be over here in the Middle East anymore. It was Donald Trump who, in the last election, 
I'm sorry, his first election said, we will secure that border. And the only reason that border collapsed under Joe Biden was it wasn't, it wasn't just the bravado of Donald Trump that just about stopped illegal immigration, but Mexico putting troops on the border to keep people in Mexico because they were worried when Donald Trump declared his tariff war on China that he would in turn declare a tariff war on Mexican-made goods coming into the United States. And they didn't want that. So they secured the border. See, Biden hasn't got a clue how to secure the border. But if Donald Trump would go big on something like national health care, I'm telling you, it's a winner. It's going to be a winner with most working class people, whether they be Democrat or Republican. That is the winner. He's taking his first steps in that direction. Notice this. On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. Ridiculous. A process that includes giving kids puberty blockers, mutating their physical appearance, and ultimately performing surgery on minor children. Can you believe this? I will sign a new executive order instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. I will then ask Congress to permanently stop federal taxpayer dollars from being used to promote or pay for these procedures and pass a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. It'll go very quickly. I will declare that any hospital or health care provider that participates in the chemical or physical mutilation of minor youth will no longer meet federal health and safety standards for Medicaid and Medicare and will be terminated from the program immediately. Furthermore, I will support the creation of a private right of action for victims to sue doctors who have unforgivably performed these procedures on minor children. The Department of Justice will investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks to determine whether they have deliberately covered up horrific long-term side effects of sex transitions in order to get rich at the expense of vulnerable patients, in this case, very vulnerable. We will also investigate whether Big Pharma or others have illegally marketed hormones and puberty blockers, which are in no way licensed or approved for this use. My Department of Education will inform states and school districts that if any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences. Absolutely. And he's killing two birds with one stone right here. He's dealing with the issue of health care and a social issue, a cultural issue on transgenderism. That's a win-win. Mr. President.